Welcome to Renee Marie Stroke of Luck. We're trying to start a watch party. And uh, let me just see here. I don't know how to click it down. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got to keep up with technology. You know, uh, yes. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest does it. Kelly Everybody does it. Everybody does, does it. it. So uh, yeah, so we're watching ourselves as you're watching us. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, I do. I have so, Mark. Hi. Yay. Welcome. Hi, Michael. To Hi everyone. <laughs> So welcome to Renee Marie's Stroke of Luck. I'm Renee Marie. We have a return guest today who is a dear friend by now. Um, and uh, we love her because her mission is um, it's time to play. And uh, she's going to be on our show in a little bit. Um, hi, guys. <laughs> oh, what happened with this? Hi, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I can't cancel it. Okay, so, um, so... What I'd like to, what we need to start out with is we um, thank you so much for the uh, for to Nancy, um, one of our board members, and Ginny. We just were at a car show last yes. week, and uh, we did um, uh, donations. And I uh, want to thank everybody who donated something to our cause. And really, it was a wonderful show. The the cars were incredible. They had a thousand, over a thousand. Um, old cars and just they were I thought it was 500 to 800 but a thousand over a thousand cars oh it was incredible and they were just beautiful and it was on the shore it was it was it was perfect it was perfect um, but we wanted to uh, continue the um, thing you know the um, the mission our, our purpose and that is to uh, give something to you um, for a donation we thought that it would be really um, wonderful uh, to give you a gift for helping us and helping our mission. Um, you know, our purpose, our mission statement is three things. It's stroke and aphasia awareness. It is our annual telethon, which we've had three and two here with Jim in the studio. And the other three with Madhouse TV, Tommy and uh, Janine have been wonderful and the Madhouse team has been wonderful. Um, but the third one is the one that we're really focused in to really start to um, energize and really get it underway and and that is to help those that their insurance has run out because nowadays um, you know when you get sick it and specifically with stroke stroke is the first leading cause of disability in the country so that means more people are suffering a stroke and you know the insurance companies think that they're able to share with us whether what your doctor says is right or wrong and how could they do that when they're in an office somewhere and they have no idea what you and your doctor are talking about and so it really is very trying to to deal with that especially when you suffer a stroke and you suffer any illness the first our our fate our belief is that you need to surround yourself with love first and and everything else will fall into place but let's get that person on a, on a mainstream recovery path 
And then the next thing is that with strokes, and I can only speak of strokes because I only know about strokes, strokes and aphasia, it's a lifelong recovery. You have to then depend on your insurance to, to cover some of your, um, you know, to cover you. So especially the rehabilitation. Yeah. Part. I mean, you sometimes you need rehabilitation. Sometimes you need, you know, you could be off for 6 months and something could trigger you to go back. So, you know, so that's our purpose. Our purpose is to and our long-term goal, Judy and I have spoken about this many times with Bobby Baby Walker is to create a center, you know, where um where doctors and uh, nurses can use their gifts to help us in our cause. So the volunteer. Yes, to volunteer. So that's our long vision. But right now we're we're don't we're gonna give you a gift. Um, so for twenty five dollars we'll we'll send a shirt to you. Um, this is the shirt. If you donate if you go to Renee Marie Language of Love Foundation Renee Marie Language of Love dot org and you donate, just put in the donation um, what you'd like, a shirt, and we'll show you a DVD and a book. And please tell us the size, and I'd be more than happy to connect with you and make sure you put your address in it as well. Um, and we'll be more than happy to send it to you. But this is, what, or this is our mission. Together we are lifting our voices and changing the face of strokes and aphasia locally and around the globe. So that is our mission. So um, the shirts do run small. I suggest you always get a big shirt so that you could just hang out in it and really spread the love. That's why we have a heart. Um, Michael, my tenant at uh, one time, I said to him, oh, Michael, I need a logo. He was an artist and he, this is an incredible logo. It's a logo it with the world and a heart, world and a heart held by a hand and it's got music notes on it. And that really is the basis to our our structure, our foundation, our mission. Um, so Judy and I are going to now show you another 20, you know, if you like a book, um, When God Nods, this, uh, my story is in here. Uh, Anna Gwelly asked me to be in the book and I'm very honored to be a part of this. So my story is in here as well as other incredible um, stories, When God Winks. And, um, and Anna Gwelly is a, a dynamic, wonderful, a writer she really has the gift of writing um, and then um, we also have DeMont's DVD DeMont do, uh, donated some DVDs to us and this is his uh, his story I know I can and um, so you know tragedy to triumph tragedy to triumph and he is a gift DeMont so you know we really just wanted <laughs> to share with you um, some of the donation gifts we're going to give to you and please um, just make sure you send your email address in the donation. I believe it goes in the donation. Um, or you just can uh, email me at Love at gmail.com and we'll connect. But we wanted to make sure that uh, we're giving something back to you for you helping our cause. It really is um, a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing, a wonderful uh, cause that we have. And we can speak from our heart yes. that... that it you is. always do. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, the next thing is, um, Jim, could you put up the uh, Miss Senior America uh, poster that next week we're going to be, um, uh, Judy and I are both attending the after party for Senior America, but I'm going to be going um, to Senior America because um, in 2020 they asked me to be a judge. So I'm really very honored to have this um, and to to be a part of it but i'm going this year to find out what i gotta do <laughs> and kind of get a gist on you know on what the uh you know what it's about and how it operates and stuff to, to be able to give you a few ideas i was a judge um during donna dean's uh, oh really good good so uh yeah. so did you put that up that was 2012 when i was oh there. i was judge judy oh yes <laughs> that's funny that's funny did you put it up jim Yes. Okay, because I'm a little behind on mine because of uh, we're having a watch party, and then um, and then okay, so this is really exciting, Dr. Mike Evangel. He has been on our show a number of times, and he's my chiropractor, and um, and he start he worked with Fred Dumbrow for the tourmaline, and um, and tourmaline is really a, a, a mineral, a watermelon mineral that helps healing through natural, through your natural healing. 
um, and it really does work. But then Dr. Mike got so involved with that that he, he speaks so well and, um, and he began working with Apples and Oranges Agency in the city and um, their dynamic um, uh, agency, uh, it, you know, Eric and Mark um, just are absolutely wonderful. Um, I've dealt with them and uh, they've asked Dr. Mike to do a show. So he is going to be this doctor, the Super <laughs> Mike show, the Dr. Super Mike show, I think it's called. What's it called? Um, the Super Mike show. I think it should be Dr. Super Mike's show. Um, <laughs> I think that, so too. That's my feeling, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, but it, it should be broadcasting this this month on Roku. But we're going to show you his um, his demo, uh, so his you know his um, little short trailer for the show. Go take it away, Jim. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evangel, I'm a chiropractor, and I'm also the host of the Super Mike Show, America's Holistic Hero. The truth is out there. There is only one truth. Every episode, we'll do our best to bring that truth to you with the hope that you and your loved ones can live healthier, safer, and more fulfilling lives. But people are confused. They don't know what to do. Because one day you hear something's good for you, and the next day it's bad. Experts on both sides of the fence say different things. We'll try to cut through the misinformation and bring the truth to you. I'm Dr. Mike. Thanks for listening. And that is the truth. What I love about Dr. Mike is he has a very caring, holistic approach to your healing, your, your, your life, and living a healthy lifestyle. And although I do believe that we have to balance ourselves with medicines, with doctors, with holistic healers, we, we all need to work together. But Dr. Mike brings that holistic healing into it. And that all began when he started working with the tourmaline. Um, but there's just so many variables and so many different ways that you could heal yourself rather than going right to medicine. And, and Dr. Mike is, has a dynamic show and I'm really happy. I mean when you watch it you'll see how knowledgeable he is and how educated he is and like Doreen our guest today he comes with facts he just doesn't give you his opinion on it. he comes with facts and you know and then you have to we as people have to take those facts and work them into our own lives because everybody's life is different so right. I, I actually all right, wait one second is she on camera <laughs> I want to make sure you're on camera before you talk it's all good no 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 I just want to make sure <laughs> my voice is okay, there you're on, no 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 you're on camera <laughs> go ahead so if base we have to be our own best advocate and there is so much information out there I've worked in healthcare for 32 years wow. since 1987 um, in administration and in quality improvement and a lot of times people just yes people and even my mother-in-law who recently had cancer said I don't like to read you research for me you can't do that you have to comb and especially now you with Google an understanding of it yourself. you really do you have to you know identify opportunities and find new right, things right. and when you just do medicine we were just having this discussion on 4th of July um, a lot of times medications just mask your secretion. So like if you have high blood pressure, for an instance, the underlying root cause is still evolving. If you have diabetes, the underlying root cause is right. still evolving. And if you have type 1 diabetes versus type 2, is different. But type 2 diabetes is a root cause for every negative outcome that there really is. Right. Um, I actually became a New York State Department of Health Deputies Prevention Counselor wow. to Let look me introduce at you. <laughs> <laughs> Before you continue using your very knowledgeable. So this is Doreen Guma. She is our, our guest on the show and, and I'm glad she tuned in, you know, folk put but, her But it's in. it's the truth. Yeah. And people really need to understand that when you just go to the one doctor, like yes. my mother in law just told me a story about a woman who needed back surgery, right? So Judy, we were talking about right. backs and whatever. And she went to one doctor who says, Oh, you need back surgery and she's like, Okay and they scheduled it. Like wouldn't you think that in today's, you know, two thousand nineteen you would at least go for another opinion. You would Definitely. at least get, you know, something, you would research this 
And see if you really needed back surgery. Right. Well, we can right. talk about your tooth, too. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, but the truth is that I feel in my world, because I am not very educated on medicines. So when, I, when something happens to me, I rely on my sister, mm -hmm. who is very educated in medicine, or my daughter, Samantha, because mm -hmm. she's another one who is in the health care field. Mm -hmm. So I, I trust that they, their input into the care that I will have is valuable because, Absolutely. because we're not all experienced or wise in one particular area in our lives. It takes so, a team. Yeah, so Absolutely. as much as, you know, I, I, I would have to read it, I wouldn't know it. I really, w I really can't understand that world, especially with uh, medicines and stuff. So, um, so I do agree with you Absolutely. that we all need to work as a and team. And we have to look at the side effects of the medication and the root, you know, oh, is it yeah. the risk benefit? Is it better or not better? Um, you Before know, what's you the even findings? take it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so many medicines you can't really get off easily. You can't just stop. So once you start it, you know. You should right. always listen to, if they're talking about it on a, in a commercial, should always listen to what they say at the end right. about all the side effects. Right, you and might don't die. don't go rushing to your doctor. Because <laughs> you might you, what? You might die. Oh my God! <laughs> and so you could die. No. <laughs> like do you? Oh, I know? can't wait to get to the doctor. There you go. <laughs> I think I'll get that one. No, no, no. <laughs> that sounds like a good no. one. No, <laughs> but but you know, um, it, it really is important. He's going to have a really wonderful um, show. So I highly recommend you follow him on Facebook, Michael Evangel. Um, it's on my Facebook page if you want to tune in and you know you want to find him. Um, and he'll you know follow Dr. Mike. He'll be able to share with you how to f uh, find that show. But if you Google the Dr. Mike show, you'll probably find it. It's going to be airing on Roku with uh, I'm from Apple. I'm looking forward to listening to. Yeah. that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Okay, so. Now that we've gotten all our uh, all our press <laughs> out of the way, um, so let's talk to Doreen about time to play. It really is important. You know, I've learned in my life uh, that balance is really an important key. Absolutely. To living a healthy lifestyle. Yes, we have to work very, 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 very hard, but you also need to play hard, and we also yes. need to rest hard, and we also need to balance heart, um, uh, meditate and be in the silence mm -hmm. at a, a wonderful pace. But on this show, we're going to talk about um, uh, time to play. So Doreen, tell us a little bit about you, you know, how you got there. Right. Well, this has been a nine year evolution. Uh, my husband's over there and he... Want to come on here? <laughs> he's, been, <laughs> he's been putting up with me. Um, a lot of my, <laughs> my uh, I guess, tipping points of identification of how to help people feel good about themselves and what Renee is speaking on about uh, knowing when you're too tired, knowing when you're feeling poorly, knowing when you need to rest, knowing. So every moment of our day, I believe, we can feel like we're at play. So it's not play per se, or it could be. It depends on what is your feeling. So we're going to really talk about emotional intelligence today. Um, I've worked in healthcare, as I was saying, since 1987. And in 1991, I was lucky enough to go to skilled nursing. Um, you are, so you're a nurse? No, I am actually board certified healthcare executive. Okay. I'm a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives. And my background has been in administration, in quality improvement. And so I started to see the statistics of the people there. People that maybe if they changed one little thing, never would have had to be in the facility. People that were at end of life with regrets. Mm. That's important. That really is a whole another show Indeed. that we could. But it's all Judy. awareness. I know. Right? <laughs> but it's all awareness. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. And you guys know, like when a lot of people are like, oh, I had to fail before I flourished. Well, I don't think anybody really needs to fail if they recognize along the way when they're having negative life experience. And then you, I have a stop sign. Wait, where is my stop sign? But you know, I think, I think we don't have to fail per se. Right. But we do have to have challenges in our lives to grow and to learn. Well, I think every moment is a learning right, experience, right, but I have right. a stop sign. So, um, what does it say? Stop, stop it's, it's your, your choice. choice. 
so basically it's just another reminder so we have those little wristbands like Judy has hers on um, I like to be visual because we get into yes. our system we I'm forget right we forget like we're going through our day and somebody cuts us off in traffic and it starts us on our downward spiral sometimes or you know the we're late and the the school bus is late or the alarm didn't go off and we're but that could happen for a day. reason that's how oh, when well, that happens to me I always think like I, I go back to you know the people that couldn't get on the train to go oh, to agree. work on 9-11 like, I was just gonna say you that. know like <laughs> like they were probably like I can't get there da, da, and all and right work. so there's always a reason why Agreed, but also, but it you puts also us play a in part that stress, yes. and yes. once we're in yes. that, yes. you know, stress, yes. how it, um, yes, I, can I, I us totally in. agree with you. So that's that's basically the, I guess, the core, the core, yes, of all of our negative life experience is emotional overwhelm. Yeah, I and agree. And this is where, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of research. Um, I your did write data, a book. Your dad, dad. I am Talk a, about I data. am a data. Well, that's QI. Like I'm a statistic. Like if you ask, I'd like I'm, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> so, but I wrote this book six years ago, and I didn't really widely market this because what happened was chapter 19 was actually written by a gentleman named Brian, and it was called um, "What Do You Want to Be When You Grow Up," and he was 50 and still wondering what he wants to be when we grow up. So I did a lot of research and I've learned um, that, and this is available on Amazon if anybody wants to know. There's 17 stories in this uh, book. Oh, it's um, like, it's like um, Anne's. Yes, what there's, I there's did. There's people's stories in Right, here. what wow. I did was I actually started this um, after I got my master's degree and I, uh, it took 20 years and I said, um, if I knew then what I know now, we all um, I need that. to write yeah. this book and my my chapter uh, specific, and there's a whole bunch of chapters that I did write in here, but always striving for the brass ring, you know, that, right? right? right. So now that I finished, this was going to be the best, so now I finished this book, and then, oh, this is, you know. It's hearsay. Exactly, yeah. but it, and then, then, so now what? So if I knew then what I know now, um, but that got me thinking. And actually, our average life expectancy in the United States is 78.6. Has it gone up at all? Because it's actually going down because really? of disease, um, increase of diabetes, increase of depression. Uh, heroin is now the leading cause of death in 50 and under. And, and, and um, uh, suicide. Suicide is tremendous. It's suicide. actually increased. I have all sorts of statistics on suicidal ideation. And um, even this was um, a cycle of self-injury that I had brought. I know it's not on the, um, and we couldn't talk about the other thing, but yeah. everything stems from emotional overwhelm. Yeah, Even so we'll, the National Association of Mental Illness. We actually have um, yes. a partner, Teresa, um, who will, she's, she's scheduled to come on the show? If she's not, mm -hmm. let's get her on. I think she is with Doreen. So oh. we, she talks about suicide. It's oh, one of absolutely. her. Absolutely. Well, this this is interesting because this um, uh, statistic that one in five children aged 13 to 18 have some type of a mental illness. I believe truly most of it is a learned behavior. We're learned helplessness. This was actually research done by Martin Seligman. He's the father of positive psychology. He's been teaching at University of Pennsylvania for over 50 years. But, but you know, I mean, that, that frightens me. I know, I know you're talking from statistics and you're talking about something, but that frightens me because as soon as I heard that. The statistic of yeah, that? Yeah, uh, um, it appeared that we were placing blame on the families. For oh, no, the, no, no. I'm just saying, so I want to be clear mm -hmm. to everybody that oh, no, that's this not. is only a statistic. Mm -hmm. This isn't any and any pinpoint or finger pointing Renee, to anybody. it could be anything. Yeah. In, in this book, there's a chapter that um, my friend Laura wrote that in third grade, one of the girls in her class said, why are you so skinny? Are you sick? which stayed with her through her whole life, and she always was a little bit heavier. Right, right. it's just something that, Right, yeah. so it's one- It's not the parents. It's not yeah. the parents. It, it, if my, my history is in that book, trust me, if it was the parents, yeah. I would be um, 
So, um, anyway. But you know what? It, you know what's important um, to take this moment to to really acknowledge um, how important p parents or caregivers are in the education and the upbringing. They're tremendously of, important. And teachers as well. But there's more than that as well, because if we look at our parents or if we look at our teachers, we all have a life experience that we are experiencing, right? right? Um, even our teachers, divorce is 64% of our population, correct? Right. So people are going through things that they don't know how to handle. Again, emotional overwhelm is the biggest and most detrimental component in our life experience. Not that we are going to be perfect at every moment, but that's where we have the stop sign. So that when we recognize that we're feeling not good, we're feeling angry, we're feeling frustrated. This is also one of the big things that we see in our society today with our negative um, behaviors to each other and our hostility and hatred and frustration. This is our not having empathy, which is one of the 26 emotional intelligence skills self that is sets. so important. Self-awareness behavioral self-control and communication. So how many marriages could have been saved if there mm. was a good communication? How many relationships? Workplace hostility is absolutely um, rampant, workplace bullying. So we keep adding legislation. We're fighting bullying in schools, but we're not teaching people how to not bully. Right. And we're telling them they have this They're new- They're seeing it even on TV and in the newspapers people bullying other people. Right. So how are you teaching that to We're your children? We're teaching people to be mean to right. each other. You so should be teaching them to be kind. In, but you can't teach a person to be kind. So let's let's discuss some of the root cause things. Can I can I just hop sure. in there? Just remember where you were. Okay. Just everybody remember where <laughs> she was. Because I think it's really important to put these in segments. Mm -hmm. um, we have the children like yes. to learn. Um, Emo but we're emotional. a product of our learned behavior. Right. right? But what, what age group are you talking about? Because to me, Everybody. There's, there's three. There's, there's children who right. we teach. There's pe parents who are going through. And then there's my age, who's 55 and above, who kind of understands it because they got it. So what you're saying is you want to take our place now, my 55 and above, and kind of like help the young children and the parents who are in it to understand. Well, that's a to, mentoring to, to, component, which is absolute. So you want to throw the U-Bend up? Because that's a good segue to that. I didn't even know <laughs> it. I didn't even see the page. So the U-Bend of happiness, which is um, this little chart that Jim is going to actually put up, was a study done at um, Stony Brook University. Um, it was done by a Dr. Broderick and a Dr. Stone. It was published in the year of 2010. And it shows that we have a negative life most of our life. And this was actually part of, again, if I knew then what I know now, sparked like, huh, why are we 50 and trying to right, 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 find right. a way to love life if we're going to die at 78.6? Of course, I'm going to live to 125, <laughs> yeah, so it's not even a problem. But um, this, this um, picture that Jim just put up shows that statistically, and this is not just in the United States, but this shows statistically that we do not enjoy life until we're over 50. And actually in the study, it shows where they had found that older people have fewer rows or arguments, I guess, and come up with better solutions to conflict. They are better at controlling their emotions, better at accepting misfortune, and less prone to anger, but which that's actually- from experience. That's but that's from what I'm saying. Yeah. So I created a program <clears throat> called Pre-Invent Your Life, right. not Reinvent, Recover, Heal, and Change. Say it, it again. Say, and say it slower. because Sure. Right, yes, yes. Pre-Invent Your Life. If you go on timetoplay.com, you can read about it. I did actually do a big research study with our students in our local high school, with our superintendent of schools, and um, a wow. gentleman uh, who was the uh, pupil personnel, and he was in charge of a suicide prevention task force in Massachusetts. Um, so he had done guidance for over 30 years, wow. um, Dr. Salavardos. Wow. So we did this research study. It took me five years total. 
um, we asked uh, 1,131 students, 9th through 12th grade, because they were able to reflect back. Right, I'd right, love to have asked right, kindergarten. Right, but, right, right. Um, what is the most important thing you, thing you need to learn how to? And they said, how to be happy as myself. Hmm. And that started. That's, a lot, that's that's great awareness for that's children. Tremendous, to, right? To acknowledge mm -hmm. that eighty and uh, ninety-two percent of seven hundred and twenty-seven said that. Ninety-two. Ninety-two percent wow. agreed or strongly agreed how to be happy as myself, because if we look at ourselves and how many people you know, how many people do you know that are not happy as themselves? I just I, I I know this is why I say like my age is you know reverent to me because I finally am at the age where I'm happy with myself. And, but look and, at and, our and, age. Yes, and, and, and that doesn't mean that I still don't have struggles, right. but I've learned the tools to deal with the struggles. But and what the would mindset. have happened if you had that awareness when you were five? Well, I, I, I probably would have been, you know, um, in a different place, but I believe that, you know, we're all put on this earth to have a purpose and, and and my purpose was to go through the struggles that I have to learn the empathy and to learn to have the ability to bring hope to other people at this venue on the Correct. show Correct. so everything that I went through I had to go through I had to go through everything in my life to get to this point I believe so and, I, and that doesn't mean that right. I'm taking anything away from your purpose, because this is your purpose this in is life. My purpose. Your purpose in life is to educate people that why wait until you're 55 when we could start training you at a young age it's to just enjoy a more your awareness life. about yes. how to deal with our, our what we are dealing with on a daily basis. I actually have a great like um, uh, graphic that is you know we are able to <clears throat> react or respond like how. Do we react or respond? It's our choice. Hence the stuff, it's your choice. Yes. But it That's is our good. choice. And for us to be able to recognize, and this is self-awareness, how are we feeling at the very given moment? And that is actually the definition of emotional intelligence. Right. Mm -hmm. So after I learned how to be happy as myself was the most important thing, I set out to find a toolbox mm -hmm. for people because a lot of, if you read a lot of people's stories about how did they become an alcoholic or how did they start using drugs, yes, maybe some people went into it because of a social, but a lot of people went into it because it made them cope Right, better right Absolutely. and this is uh you know the the whole point being self-aware at that moment to make that choice that will be best serving to us right. and not that you won't go through those experiences right, right. Have, yeah but yeah. how do you deal with the experience right, right. and that's it you got to have the 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 tool set and the skills like dominic cordalesa taught me yeah. um going through my stroke and mm -hmm. you know to does use, he know you Praise him <laughs> Yes, he does. Because I always, I always, I, Hi, Dominic. I always send him a quick thank you, Dom. You know, like I, awareness, mm -hmm. awareness to thank those people that have helped you to get where you are. I think it's very important that you be happy on your, in your profession. Okay, but a lot choose. of people don't. Do you know that eighty-seven percent of our workers hate their work? So what you're saying is tremendously important, but a lot of times we feel stuck. And this is also- never feel stuck. I but mean, a lot of a times lot of we feel stuck. Yeah. And, and one other thing I want to say is that in my life, I've had people say, you can't do that. Indeed. You can't accomplish that. That's impossible. You can't go from that you, industry to this industry. If you don't have good self-esteem, self-awareness, And you know what my answer was? Self-respect. Watch. But you are different. And I'd be more motivated to show right. them and did show them. But you're unique because a lot of times that's where that negative is. That's why we have my, this whole bullying thing and the right. bullying is causing suicidal ideation. Like that feeling of that negative thing. The feeling down. of somebody saying something couldn't be done mm -hmm. motivated me more to do it. You're unique. But I want to bring, I want to. <laughs> and you I, must have learned that somewhere yeah. along the yes. line from your parents yes. or from a relative or somebody. You, you could said accomplish you had, anything you put your mind But you had a great mentor even. You, you were telling me about your well, boss. My parents my my uh, one of my bosses right but and just imagine if you didn't have a person who taught you that can-do attitude 
and you learned again that learned helplessness um, because a lot of people are in that situation. So um, just to throw out there, if anybody does feel actually, let me think, what did I give? Oh, I didn't give um, Jim the one other thing. Okay, let's, um, can I can I bring something yes. up? Because I always like to bring awareness to to make sure that people understand what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Because we were talking about, Judy said, mentioned that people um, are unhappy in their jobs, which they are. And mm -hmm. I totally get it, because I've been there. Um, the, and it was- The bullying yes, and the inhostility. Yes, but this yes, is because, yes. let me throw that out there, and I brought this big- But I, this, this is what I want to say. Um, I don't, we don't expect you right now to quit your job. Oh gosh, no. no. We no. don't We're not advocating <laughs> that. Right. So what you need you to do. You make a plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to, but we need to share that with our audience, that you need to come up, say, okay, I'm not happy in my job. What, what can I, I do about what it? What can I do about it? Exactly. Talk to people who are empowering to you. Talk to people to help you work through it. Right. Write, uh, write down what you don't like about your job. Write down what you do like about your job bec or what you want to be doing in your life. Because writing is very powerful. Writing actually puts it in ink that there's no taking away from it. And, right. don't, and don't think that you can't, like erase. If, if, you look, if you go through your list, just make a list. What I'm saying is to you, come up with a plan of action to, to work out the fact that you are not happy in your job and where you want to go and, and I will tell, I will guarantee to you that if you start that process and give yourself ending goals, that somehow along the way, the universe or God in my world will make it happen for you. But you, we have to be very affirmative of what we want. We have to understand what we want in our lives. We right. can't just be wishy-washy about what we want. So if, I just wanted if, to bring that. If you want, I have this great tool. Um, oh, it's, it's a. You know, I got to tell you, we didn't even plan this. <laughs> no, go ahead. We have a wishes, vision, and goals. So if you email me at Doreen at time to play .com or you could contact Renee, I'll email you this worksheet. Again, it basically is the wishes, vision, goal, your options, whatever your option might be, and to choose one to start because that's where um, we get a lot of those end of life regrets because we wait for someday. I hate my job today, but someday I'll look for a new job or I wanted to finish college and someday I'll go back to school and do we do it? I gotta tell you though, this is a God thing for me today. And because, you know, I've been talking to Jim for a while about starting a studio yes. in New Jersey. Yes. And it's frightening. It's, I went to a bank for a business loan. <laughs> I mean, it's frightening. It, you know, but, but but if you didn't do it, but if I didn't do it, right? I would be I'd be very regretful um, in my life. Absolutely. So I said I haven't signed the I haven't signed the lease yet for the we found we we found we found a location mm -hmm. and actually my real estate agent was looking and looking and I went and looked at some and there were six thousand dollars eight thousand dollars <laughs> it was like astronomical. And all of a sudden she called me, she said, Renee, she said, this one just appeared. It's been on the market for a long time, but I just found it. She goes, I don't know where it was hiding. That's so funny. Well, it's a God there thing for go. me. Yes. That was for me. So yes. I went and I met with the the the, uh, the landlord and, um, and he runs a business downstairs and he said he didn't want a unique office upstairs. He wanted, some, uh, you want, he wanted a unique office upstairs. Mm -hmm. Somebody that did something out of the ordinary and that's us. Wow. You know? <laughs> but, but I'm just telling you. So then I said, okay. So then I, I said, I got to pray on it for a week. Rosanna was going away for a week. And, um, and then I said, okay, let me go to the, so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm letting, I'm being led to whether it's the right thing to do, which I know it is, especially because of this show. I mean, God, if, I don't, if I don't take the, uh, the wing from God, when God winks, if I don't <laughs> take the wing from God today, I'm a little off beat. But yes, yeah, so thank you for, um, you know, thank you for booking her today and thank you for coming on and <laughs> thank you for answering the question. <laughs> there's, there's so much that I can share. So we talked about the pre-invent instead of reinvention, recovery, heal, change, existing and surviving. So I do believe there is no reason for us to live the majority of our life in despair and frustration and anger and hopelessness. 
and this is stuff that we really do learn as we go um, just by being a victim of circumstance but not knowing how to dig yourself back right. out. Right. So I wanted to share that um, little pyramid um, gem. Does he right. have it? Yes, the one. So during this research of how to be happy as myself, there's always a reason that we maybe don't feel happy as ourselves, right? So um, I've learned about adverse childhood experiences. So adverse childhood experiences are something that the um, Center for Disease Control uh, researched in 1995. It was all by accident. There was actually a um, a study that had been done um, by a weight loss doctor who actually said to a patient and made an accident saying, um, what was your weight at your first sexual experience? And the woman started to cry and said 40 pounds. So with more research um, and that pyramid that just showed, the, basically, there's 10 main adverse childhood experiences, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, and it is actually shown that one in three girls and one in four to six boys are sexually abused. Um, and nobody, and they, they, they don't, because you don't know whether it's right or wrong. It's behind the closed doors, and it's difficult to stop. So that pyramid that Jim had that's, put that, up. That's heartbreaking to me, I gotta tell you, because you know when you and they're usually done by family members or right. friends, friends right. or family and my members. my husband's a retired New York City police sergeant, so he's oh my he's God. seen more God than he you. should have um, in his unfortunate experience. Um, there's also domestic violence, uh, mother treated badly, uh, substance abuse in the home. Twenty seven percent of people have substance abuse in their home. So if you're learning, this is a philosophy that I have, if my mom comes home and drinks a bottle of wine every night to deal uh -huh. with life, what am I you're learning learn to, do? to do? That, exactly, so. um, mental illness in the home, separation or divorce, which is tremendous. And let's just break from this list for a second. If you're a, a child, and you're having a divorce in your life situation, and you go to school, and you're not able to pay attention, and you're not able to deal with what's happening in your life experience, what does the teacher do? They send you to the principal. Mm. They're not really taught to deal with this life experience right. and the childhood trauma. Plus, they have 40 children in their mm. class. Yeah, so. but, but I gotta tell <laughs> you that um, it depends on what teacher you have because, right but because the nowadays, majority yeah but nowadays I've spoken to a number of teachers and I know the one from a rural uh, location by us and he I work with him while um, he volunteers now and he says that when he goes in the morning sometimes he has to bring food of his own to give to the but children that's, that's but, another, but, right. but he is aware mm -hmm. that what he has to do to successfully Reach the, kids. reach the kids and so the so socioeconomic status actually should be the 11th um, let me finish the list separation and divorce is detrimentally impactful uh, having a household member in jail emotional or physical neglect so again when we look at statistics and we look at things um, if you're having a negative work experience, maybe you're not then able to, not that you don't want to, but maybe you're not able to then, um, you know, be there for your children when they come home. Or if your job is so, um, having so much requirements. If you come from a divorce, or are recently divorced, and you uh, go into the job market, you may start out negative. So Even if, if you have a stroke. If right. you have a stroke so or, need, or aphasia, mm -hmm. and yet you can understand, but you can't communicate. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you get back into the it's, work? You need somebody, right. your it's boss tough. or somebody to kind of guide you, you yeah. in a yeah. positive yeah. way. Right. And then it And that's works. a whole different, that's a whole thing that we were talking about before is, you know, what if you don't get insurance? You know, what if you, what if you don't get workman's comp? What if you don't get all that stuff? It creates and, more and it difficulty creates more, in your it, life experience, exactly. Right, and right. then you have to choose how can you survive going into that as well. And that's a, a, another topic, because there's a lot of people out there who, especially now even with autoimmune disease and things, have become very disabled. Yes. 
and it's and very hard for them to covering. get to yeah. um, their work. But yeah. basically what the pyramid has found, and this is if you go on to Center for Disease Control and you look up ACE, that adverse childhood experiences creates disrupted neurodevelopment. So your neural pathways shift, mm. but it can be, and it is shown that if you focus on positive and opportunities, and again, dealing with our emotional overwhelm, you could shift it back mm. to a different way and not having that negative. The, um, mind, you're everything, the mind controls so much. Indeed, it is so mind much. Set. We yes. are very big in mindfulness now. My goal is to give awareness for mindset. And it's very so. important to have positive people in your life. Indeed. And not to hang around with people who are negative and who are bullying or whatever. But we look for a sense of belonging. And people... You don't want to belong to that kind of a group. But that, that might be where people fall into. And that's that's a problem. But but it's, it's also an awareness. Well, I was see, just going to say that. Right. If you have that to be is, aware of it and exactly. find people who are positive. And and the other thing is, you have, as a friend or, or someone that's seeing someone else going through it, you have to kind of like kindly guide them and judge mm -hmm. them and, and yes. give them help because when you're in the center of things, sometimes you do, can't think clear. I understand. You can't, you can't think clear because. Um, you know, you're just surrounded with all that negativity mm -hmm. and all that craziness that you can't think clear. I really find it very important to always. That's where we. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's where yes. the stop yes. sign comes in. So, but that's where pre-invent your life comes in, in, in where before we have that social, emotional, or cognitive impairment and adopt risk behaviors and increase our risk of disease and disability and actually yeah. it's shown to increase death. So if a person has four adverse childhood experiences, which is very easy, I actually have six, I believe, if you count them all up from my past childhood, uh, a score of four nearly doubles the risk of heart disease and cancer, increases the likelihood of becoming alcoholic by 700%, attempted suicide by 1200%, and IV drug use by 4600%. Yeah, because, because each each illness is linked to an emotional Indeed, it really is. Cause. Yes. I, and I yes. believe that that emotional overwhelm, this is where we just, that frustration and that anger, like I know a woman who actually has a cancer and she's always posting about um, people, you, you don't know um, people until there's a thing. Like there's anger, you have to get rid of the anger. There's a thing called forgiveness, there's there's different things out there, there's the hope and opal prayer. Yes. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, it frees you, it frees them. But the, the socioeconomic status, the American Psychiatric Association actually put out a um, study that again, we focus a lot in our country on social determinants of care for health and all these other things, but we're not really looking at the impact on the kids. Um, it's not their fault they're in the situation they're in. Right. And it actually is shown to decrease life expectancy, increase risk of Alzheimer's, um, increase anxiety, attempted suicide, depression, illicit drug use, drinking, um, et cetera. So there's all root cause and that's where my whole thing is if a person feels emotionally frustrated, like they have a um, not pleased with their life, I actually put together a program. I actually have this wonderful, and I should have given Jim a um, uh, I think photo. I could take well, a, this, I could take a is, photo of it really, when we get done and post yeah, it online. This is actually a sample. It's actually there is one if you go on time2play.com and you click on um, start enjoying life today. There's actually a sample of a girl who was 17 with tremendous social anxiety disorder, wouldn't go out of her house. Um, there's negative. Um, we start with this. I have this assessment, it's for 11 years and over. I don't even need to use it. I've done almost 500 of these now. But to be able to see where we can build a strength, because again, that emotional overwhelm, is it behavioral self-control? Is it communication? Do you feel like you can speak, right? So these are chakras right. connected, right? right. But right. if you 
um, don't have empathy. You, you're taking people with all of these um, vulnerabilities and there's nothing wrong with one person. Right. There's nothing wrong with the person. Right. But you're taking all these people, then you're putting them in a workplace, then you're putting them in a school, <laughs> and you're expecting them to be nice. Here's the scenario. My mom <clears throat> is physically abused. I'm scared every night. I'm hateful. I'm angry. I go to school, and, and you tell me that. to be nice. How is that happening? We're not You're teaching. projecting what you know from home. Right. To My daughter was school. actually telling me about a girl <clears throat> that she knows yesterday that continues to enter into really negative and, and poor relationships. And She's people that tell from. her, don't let them treat you that way. Don't date a person like that, all of this stuff. And she said to my daughter, my daughter's 24, my daughter Jackie, and she said to her, nobody has told me how not to. Right, right. That's a good lead in because we've, we've shared with them the challenges right. and the negativity. Now I wanna, we, only have a f we only have a few more minutes left. I wanna take the time to play. I, okay. wanna, I wanna understand how, I don't wanna talk about the negativity anymore. <laughs> I want, cause, cause we have to get, we, well, we, we, have, to, we have to shift it. Right, we have, we to, ha shift we it. have to become in control of yes, our, yes. our life experience. Yes. I do actually have this great workshop. This is, and I have this for you, um, Renee. I hope this is your size, but uh, July, <laughs> 18th. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so um, July 18th, my office is in Port Jeff Station. Um, we are a 501c3 not-for-profit in Joy Life Advocacy. So we have this I Am Awesome oh, I love workshop. It. Uh, so I love we it. color this in. We do some emotional intelligence, self-awareness, oh. how do you feel when, blah, 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 all that stuff. But if you say, I am depressed, how do you feel? Right. Right. And if you say, I am awesome, how do you feel? So my goal is really to do these at schools, mm -hmm. um, senior centers. You know so what I'm going to do with that? What? I'm going to hang it in our new studio. Ah, I'm gonna beautiful. I'm going to hang it because that's like, that's like, that's what so we fabulous. Do. But we actually color this in. So we were discussing self-expression, right? Self-expression. Yes. This is where self-awareness is our key foundational skill set. Okay, so stop. Right? We got to take it. One, because you you are so you're like Dr. Mike. Oh no! You have no 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 Dr. Mike. I just I just raved about Dr. Mike. Okay, good, good. So no, but but you have so much knowledge in your um in your mind that you want to share everything. But I have found that the listener has to take things one baby step at a time. So let's take how they could shift their minds. Right. How, well, talk this about, again is self-awareness. Self-awareness and self-expression. How do I, They're I'm going to ask you the question. Yes. The, just like that child asked your daughter, how do I get self-awareness? How do right. I? You call me. No, 20 no, minutes. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, no. Seriously. How do I do that? Who do I find? Who do I talk to? Where do I go? I want to learn. I want to learn. And I, I got to be, and I also have to be aware of Someone's telling me the right thing, not the wrong thing, because there's a right. lot of voices well, out there. Well, I've taken people who have gone to counseling for over 20 years and still hated everything about their life and changed them and shifted them in 20 minutes. So I actually believe that this is the most um, easy, not kidding, simple, again, I had a negative life childhood, simple, so Simple. But how is Self it simple? Self awareness when we find ourselves feeling upset and frustrated and angry, that's when we have to stop. Stop and do what? Stop. I, I don't mean to be, a, but but stop. I'm looking at it from a, from a person who is combobulated and just all over the place and just in a, re in, a in a frenzy and don't know what to do and 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 like and you're telling me to stop, but what do I have to stop and do? Like we where do I have to stop. go? We have to take an observation at that moment of what is causing us to feel not good. Right. They need what to write is, it down. They need to be aware of right, it. Right. We can. Right. It's, it's really simple. Listen to ourselves. Listen to what other people are telling us. Self-awareness and self-expression are our keys. So we are able to um, 
identify that somebody is speaking to us in a manner that we don't particularly care for. Mm -hmm. We need to evaluate what are our choices at that time. How are we reacting? And the most important thing, which is very interesting because I talk to people all the time about this, who are we in control of? Who? Ourselves. Thank you. We are so, especially nowadays, angry. So many people are angry at everything. <laughs> I can't do anything because my son, we have this discussion, he's 27, he's like, well, what are you going to do about it? I can't. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to make myself feel okay. Well, what I do is, this is, and this is just, I've always done this, mm -hmm. is everybody's around here talking and da 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 da, I go around them. I don't even get, <laughs> I don't even get involved. Like, like, right. I don't the gossip, like you're right. 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 Is, right. Do you do participate? You participate? Well, no. Thank you. No, I don't have exactly. time for that. I don't right. have time for that. Now, if they want my opinion or if they want me to do something or whatever, I'm more than ha happy yeah. to put my input in, listen to them. Right. But I'm not going to spend my life and my time on one single situation right. that is just taking away from what am I doing in my but life. But what you just did is a self-awareness. How is that going to make you feel? How is that going to impact you, your loved ones, your family, which is the definition of emotional intelligence? Right. Right. How is my behavior going to impact somebody else? How is my behavior going to impact myself? And what I say, how is what I say going to impact somebody else? How is what I say going to impact myself? Hence the I am, I am awesome. Participate uh, right. in the positive. Indeed. Right. And person can change that because yes. if you do come upon this whole thing, you do firstly, of course, have that choice whether to participate right. or not. Or secondly, have an opportunity depending on the situation because sometimes there's a lot of volatility now. Again, you might want to just pass it by and right. not, just you know, say because, you know, like we talk about that all the time. I don't post... Things when on anyone Facebook asks like you, that. I don't, when I don't, and and I, I just, you know, we have to stay true. You know, I have to stay to true to myself. Indeed, and she's a very positive person. person. I wanted to mention. Judy said to me <laughs> this morning that she loves. We have a time to play dot com group yes. page. Uh, it's also called time to play news, but time to play dot com. If you go the public group. Um, it it actually has a picture on it that says. Um, we don't get old, we don't stop playing because we get old, we get old because we stop playing. And play is quality of life as far as I'm concerned. Um, again, every moment of our day we can feel like we're at play. But Judy said to me she listens to, um, she goes there every day and she loves what we post and I invite everybody to be part of that. They can post you know, they can That's ask awesome. questions. We'll, we'll, we'll post it to our, our Facebook and our website. Absolutely. We'll, I just want wanna, as a partner for our website. I, would so like I just want to add to that, that everybody should have something um, to do. Mm -hmm. Indeed. That they enjoy doing. Sense of community and something belonging. Something to look yes. forward to. Yes. In their yes. life. Yes. But and I, most importantly, somebody to love. Yes. yes. We're working on that for me. Yes. <laughs> I'm definitely working on that. <laughs> in all actuality. I have a lot of love in my life, don't get me yes, wrong. Yes, yes. I have I'm, a lot of family. But Judy's like doing her work to I'm find doing my But a behind sense the of volunteering <laughs> even as well. Yes. If yes. you feel lonely, and I had a gentleman who I helped coach, uh, he was lonely. And I said, what's your passion? What do you love to do? Anyway, he started to volunteer. You don't have to do much. No. You just have to have a reason to wake up for the morning. Well, when I first got know? separated from my children's father, who we're in a great place right now, but, you know, my kids would go with him on the holidays. Um, and mm -hmm. and this was like 25 years ago, or 25, whatever. It was a long, long time ago. And um, and I just, I find myself in bed on the holidays. Right. Like, oh, why no. would I get up? Like, right. You know, I had nothing to get up for. Everybody was doing their thing. And yeah, I could go to my families, but I'm by my family by myself without my kids. And 
So I actually started to perform on the holidays, and that's why I continued oh, to perform on the holidays okay. because those people that are in beds and ill and sick and on their you give their them bed, something to I want to give to. them hope and, and I want to give them entertainment. Absolutely. That's why I to this day on Christmas on Easter I I spend a lot of time with my family, but on those days it's very important that I remember how it felt to. Right. be alone and by myself and, and people are yeah. all people my children grew up in the healthcare industry they grew up in the hospitals they grew up in the nursing homes they helped volunteer you know of course in the beginning they would ask questions why does that person have no legs why does that person have that oxygen right. and stuff and right. there they have empathy Right. Now it's they have not, an appreciation yes, of life. Yes. But it's not because a person is different. We really are all, all the, the same. same. Yes. 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 But if we take a minute to stop and not just be like, oh, that old person or yeah. oh, that whatever. Get, hopefully we'll get, all get old. Hopefully. I plan on living to 125. So I do want to like... You know, I like to bring awareness and I do want people to wear, you know, what Doreen is talking about really takes time out of your day and you know when we get up in the morning we really need to come up with what are we going to do today we really need to schedule our, our day out you know not that you know if, if you're it at makes work it less stressful it makes it less Indeed. stressful I actually have in my appointment book dates that go all the way into December well wow. you're you're crazy do you know that I was booked to do this today on March 10th Judy booked me to yeah. come today we're booked until uh, through crazy. October we're but, booked right now through October but it's I crazy. do I do want to share that you know uh, you have to schedule you have to you have to look at everything like a business you know you do have to schedule everything you have to schedule your downtime you have to schedule your 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 meditation time you have to schedule you your do. relationships you have to make sure with your you husband, take care of yourself you know or, or your your partner i mean I, sometimes people get so busy and that's why their relationships break up because they don't have time to date and it really is important to schedule something for a date time you know make it fun like you're saying or you know and work work is a part of your schedule don't make work your entire schedule, you know, you have to make work a part of your schedule, you know, and, and that's taking the power back for you, right, to in your life, and that will give you the ability to, to time to play and to meditate right. and become and, aware. And even at work, we should be enjoying our day, yes. because that's why yes. we have hump day, and that's yes. why we have, oh my gosh, it's Friday, thank God yes. you made it through another yes. work week. <laughs> yes. So if you look up wow, it's Friday, you will find nothing except, thank God it's Fridays. Right. Friday, woo, it's the weekend, woo -hoo. So if you are, whoever's out there, if you are in a negative workplace, again, I have a program for that too. It's the Employee Prevention Program, Preventing Negative Outcomes in Our Workplaces. 87% um, again of our workers are displeased and that is horrific. Getting yeah. up to go to a place where you really yeah. don't want to be at, I, or you have a person bullying. Do we have time for bullying. me to mention something? Yes, yes. I, Jim, we have time, I right? was working in a, Jim, we have time? a major corporation <laughs> in the public affairs department. Okay. And I was working so fast that I was getting my fifth boss, but not a raise. <laughs> my fifth oh my boss. gosh. And I said to myself, I'm not happy with this, so I went to Human Resources and I said, I'm thinking of leaving because I'm not going to work for five bosses. They said, well, we have an opening in sales promotion. Would you be willing to stick with it? Don't mention to the new person that they're going to be working for five people. And I did, and I switched over. Now, when I switched over, the new boss wasn't there yet. Hmm. That was my Joe Rosenbaum. Hmm. And that I was negative because... You know, I came from a department where I was really busy. Now I'm doing nothing. And, you know, I started to go out and look. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, when Joe came, he said, listen, are you unhappy about something? And I said, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on in this department. He said, I will teach you everything about sales promotion, marketing, public relations. I said, and I just came out of that department. He said, um, you're going to be the happiest person. Just stick with me. And I was. See, and, and he put me on a very wonderful. I knew that I could not stay where right. I was because I was no it longer was happy working for five people. So and I, you know, I've been I doing did something about it. I've been doing some inquiries. Um, leadership and management is probably part. You know, that's most of the issue. Like you were very happy because Alan Rosenblum 
No, Joe. Rosa Joe. Down. Sorry, I was close. <laughs> Same alphabet. So, <laughs> so he came in and he said, you're going to be so happy here. But he was aware that it was his responsibility to make that. Right. Many times a manager is promoted just because of a longevity thing or whatever. Yep, they don't have the tools. I had to you. work with people all over the country mm -hmm. and help them with their uh, sales promotion See, programs. so you were so lucky. So, oh, you had a band-aid, I forgot. I was, made these fun things. I have this new campaign, um, Create Solutions Instead of Band-Aids. And um, This is going to go on my that's, that's really it's, good. But it's <laughs> such the truth because I'm place this we on just band-aid, we <laughs> band-aid. I love it. On yeah. LinkedIn. This Absolutely. is a LinkedIn thing. Because this really goes for the professionals in life. Well, it's all of us yeah, because but we're always looking for that band-aid. Right, but, but the uh, professionals in life, because of what you just said, leaders, they're really they're very important right. to have good leaders to make your workplace feel comfortable. Because it's you know? the worst thing ever. And there's so much. Because we all have to work. And Indeed. by the way, he turned out to be the best boss I ever I'm had. I'm so glad that you had that experience. And I'm so glad that you were assertive enough and that's self-awareness too. Right. Um, I to knew be I able to, to but five bosses I could end up with six but or most, seven. But most people wouldn't take that initiative, I can honestly say. So, you know, this is this is where and they we offered have me so something much issue. working for the chairman of the board. I said, No, that's not I you know, I liked him and everything, but I wanted something that was people He's so cute. Oriented. Yeah. I love and I, I got love to how work with smart a lot she is. Yes, There's also smart. a situation regarding caregivers and caregiver burnout and loneliness and that's another topic yeah. that we could maybe yeah. talk about yes. some and other I was time. A we'll, have you back. we'll definitely have you back because I, I said caregiver for my dad. Like Dr. Mike. It's so it's so lonely and stressful and overwhelming. It, was. it is. Yeah. And actually um, AARP is working on a caregiver um, assistance, uh, visits to homes and things wow. to try to decrease loneliness and stress and, and overwhelmment. Again, that's such a big deal. So that's something we that we'll be working on. We could talk about yeah, it. hopefully maybe I can, yeah, I can absolutely. bring Bernard with me. And absolutely, we can, absolutely. We can speak it, on it really is important because we're going to have to um, close. Well, we could talk. I could I know. talk for we ten could talk years. Forever. <laughs> could but that's what I said. Like you're like Dr. Mike, where you have a lot of knowledge. Well, this is just so simple. I know you'd think it's maybe not, but really, it's enjoy life. It's an enjoy life umbrella. Right. Where? How do you enjoy life in your home? How do you enjoy life in your relationship? How do you enjoy you life in your business? Make it happen. Right. Indeed. But, but like your Indeed. daughter said to you, that child said to her, "How do I do it?" But that's, that's the point. That's the point. Because that's the point. We're not taught it. Yeah. And yes. There is right. no. How do, where do they find it? Right. You, but you need you need a person like an accountability partner. But you also need to know that you're not happy with what your current situation is. And yes, I'm going to make it different. Right. I'm going to change it. But for the you positive. know how many people continue to complain and will never they actually do it. Because they just they just don't know how they, they, they just exactly don't know how. and that you have you talking about it just brings awareness to them and maybe and that's that all, today that's, is their and Sunday that's the, and, and right. whoever is out there ready to hear the awareness will get it and I we hope so. we had to reach some people today I'm and sure that's we, why yeah. we're yeah. here to do yeah. this but if anybody has questions call me six three one three three one two six seven five ask the ladies how to reach me um, go to time to play .com. I'm 24 hours a day seven days a week pretty much this is this is my baby this is my life and we're gonna put you as a partner on a website so they can just go to a website and click. that would be lovely I appreciate Jim, do you want to pop in and say a few words I see you sitting there <laughs> <laughs> he's so patient like I just went through Jim's her, not Jim the studio Jim, Jim her husband. <laughs> I just went through piles and piles of research and articles and papers and I organized everything it was like everywhere yesterday but oh I'm writing a new book it's going to be called um, unraveling the re the pre inventor life toolbox and it's going to be short yeah originally yeah. it was going to be big yeah. but i basically I, I say 20 minutes yeah people don't 20 want 20 minutes people, 
don't want th they'll take this well this for book is actually very cool because yeah they'll a take lot this of people, for references though like right. they'll just read it a little bit at a time well there's article there's uh stories in there about suicidal ideation mm. and use of alcohol drugs and mm. and mm. um divorce and mm. you know, marriage so longevity and all mm -hmm. different scenarios but you know we can learn from another person's experience absolutely that's absolutely. how we used to do it in the old yep. days yeah right yeah. And people learn from this. And you have yeah. to take time to reassess yeah. what Absolutely. your situation is or was in a bad marriage and not jump into another one till you are yes you right need. people that right are married for five times and one. they keep yeah. finding the same but that if anybody wants that um okay. worksheet we're gonna post we'll, we'll take a photo of it i'll post it online okay i'll post it on facebook jim in the studio do you have anything you'd want to share th after you listen to all our <laughs> oh, I think I got it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, so Jim. much knowledge early in the morning. I know. You know. It's true. On a Sunday. I know. <laughs> I know. But Jim is very aware. I got to tell you, Jim is very aware of people, and he's a great uh, leader. And um, Thank you. And we're honored to, to ha call him a family member of ours. So, um, all right. Well, we want to thank you for... Oh, I'm so grateful to have oh the opportunity... Gosh. We you will know, talk so. about in November, late October. Oh my November. gosh, I can't believe we're booked. I know. <laughs> I'm going yeah, over I the schedule believe. now. It's yes. true. It just so floors funny, me. right? It floors you just me. have to confirm. We've you had got great, it. We've had, I'm really very proud of the shows we've had. We really do bring a wide range of um, of education and awareness to people. Well, if you're not feeling well, you have two choices: either empower yourself like you did or not mm. and that's why this segment is really actually important for yes. even the people you're reaching the people who are the caregivers the people who have been inflicted with an illness that um, has changed their life you know to bring that awareness to them that they still can flourish mm. it really is up to them I was just having this conversation with my father-in-law you know he's eight, he's gonna be 80 years old he's like I'm done just like yeah. that I'm done. Well, <laughs> no you could be done. Or you're, <laughs> did you see there's a 100-year-old guy jogging across the country? You know, you want to be done? Everybody you? should try to make it to at least 100. I would think. <laughs> you know, why are you done? It's <laughs> your decision. You know, my, my mind goes right to, and I know we were talking about the general public, you know, but my mind goes to those that suffer from aphasia. Who Indeed. Who don't, mm -hmm. can't comprehend mm -hmm. or grasp the the awareness they need to find. So it, it, there's a I, I talk about this all the time, and it's my mission to find out that bridge between, you know, I know they we need nobody can do it for us. That's one thing I've learned in my life. We have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you can have loved ones, you can have family members, you can have doctors on the other side telling the stroke patient or aphasia or brain injury person that they have to do this. But if they don't understand it and grasp it, how can they begin to do it? That's a so, little bit different. Yeah, Indeed. so so how do we, um, I mean, I, in our world, and I said this before, and this is, I'm one million percent positive, is you got to start with love. You have to, they have to, if they can't understand it, they have to feel it. Mm -hmm. And they have to be able to trust again to that person that's on the other side and, and, and peel away that onion and really get your brain um, defragmented so that you could begin to understand it. And that's what Domina Cordalesa did to <laughs> me, um, you know, because I had a blockage in my <laughs> brain. Um, and I was just like, oh, no, 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 my no, 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 he was the one that God brought into my life to at a critical at a critical time where I was either going to stay where I was or I was going to flourish to make a difference in, right. in, in the foundation and, and in the entertainment world and really co helped me to understand what my purpose was and helped me to defragment that. And let's not forget that you're going to have a movie. You're yes. After yes. your book is out, yes. which should be out soon, yes. 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 you're 
working yes, on a movie. that's my long term vision. Oh, it's not it's, that far it's away. It's wonderful yeah. that you have these things. <laughs> but I was just talking on Fourth of July with um, one of our family members who's a veteran, and he had a traumatic brain injury. And there is a difference in, you know, a person with that type of situation right. and their impact on their life and their quality of life and, and the on impact family. on their families exactly and the yeah. caregivers yeah. and the um, or a person who's just learned how to not feel good about themselves. Right. So there's right. there's a lot of different circumstances. Yes. Every single yes. human being yes. is completely different, yeah. but I believe every single human being can have the best quality of life afforded right. to them right. as long as they're a willing participant. Yeah. To yes. do it. And everybody else, you know, that works with the stroke patient or brain injury patient should use these tools Absolutely. to be able to work strongly and effectively with that family member. They Absolutely. have to be in tune themselves because energy runs, energy connects, and you got to bring around them the good energy, the positive energy. That, and if that one thing runs. doesn't work, something else. Yes. Like we're yes. going to be working on an art therapy uh, program, mm -hmm. um, meeting with the Port Jeff Arts Council wow. on Thursday, wow. because art is an expression of the soul, and yeah. if you are depressed or if you are sad, you can start That's to shift. Outlet. Absolutely. There's, yeah. There is a tool for everything. Yes, there is. Absolutely. There definitely is. Well, once again, we want to thank you. Thank it you was a so pleasure. much for thank having me. Thank you for being a part of our family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim, over there. Oh, did you mention that you're doing this telephone coming up on the 2020 they booked? Yeah, it's Gosh, 2020. March We're booked. Three. March 3rd, Jim. Well. 2020. <laughs> Just so It'll that be you know. I didn't it. even tell him because it's too far May, in advance. May. It's I said March. Ma May. 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 It'll be here before you Let's know. Let's not rush. No, so thank you very much. Don't forget to donate. Here, Judy. You could donate and you could, we'll give, send you a shirt or a, a book, which I'm a part of, and the DVD, which DeMont did, and, and um, we'll uh, ha add Doreen's uh, stuff onto our, our treasures. But thank you so much, um, Judy. Thank you. It was You're a great, up. great show. Um, time to play. So uh, stay tuned next Take week. Take time to play. Take time to play. Indeed. Next week we have... Um, next week... <clears throat> I have to put on my glasses. Uh, but this was the one that she booked for a year. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Mark and Brenda Moore. Yes. And Sharon Bean actually took connect us. Took me one us. year to do wow. that. Sharon, Sharon Bean oh, actually this. is the one that connected us. So it's going to be a very special show because if Sharon Bean found something in someone who she thought should be on our show, I really take value in that. So uh, we'll send it to she Sharon. She tours the country. So... Yes, yes, wow. which we hope to do next, tour this <laughs> country, Absolutely. with our next book. Maybe we'll go on a tour together. I would love it. We'll go on a tour together. Sounds okay. Like <laughs> I don't like to do things alone. I like to do things with my family, <laughs> okay. my friends. You know what? <laughs> we can start. make a bigger impact. Let's yes. start in Hawaii. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, okay, we're going to go because we've been running 20 minutes over. But thank you, Pamela, for uh, you not so doing your show today and for allowing <laughs> us to do some. You ready? We're going to blow kisses. Oh, check We're going to blow kisses. Ready? One, two, three. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a stroke of luck, and God bless, and we'll see you next week.
conversation there all day The lines held off inside my head I left here like a broken man With no idea of where I stand Oh, my mind clears Lord, I shed all of my tears Lord, now baby, I was just waiting here While you moved on already won